Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video we are doing something a little bit different. I got a comment the other day on one of my old videos on the 2cm beam system. How exactly do you aim it? And that's what I'm going to do today. It show you a simple way of building a aimable beam turret if you don't know how to do it yourself. So what you're going to need is, well first obviously the 2cm beam system, which will be in the description below if you haven't downloaded it already. And the MART script, which is WIPS Mouse Aimed Rotor Turret Scripts, which will also be in the description below for you to download because you will need this because this is how we are going to aim it and I will show you how to set it up as well. So first things first, for those who don't know the beam system, this is essentially a custom build turret. Yes, you get like Lego blocks to build your own little weapon with. The only problem is it doesn't have a proper firing function. So what I've set up over here is a simple grid. The big block over here is the generator where the beam comes out. That beam will hit one of these blocks and get directed to wherever the arrow is pointing. So the arrow is pointing left, that arrow is pointing up, that one is pointing right and that one is pointing down. It has to go in a loop in order for the beam to charge up. So what I'm going to do right now is turn on the beam system and show you. And there we go. This will cause the beam to come out as a generator, hit the block and will go round in a loop continuously, making this beam much, much stronger, much bigger. As you can see right before you, that beam is getting very big, it's getting very bright, because it's now in an infinite loop, storing all that energy. Now, it doesn't have to be a square. No, you could do whatever you want, as long as it has a loop somewhere inside it. So if I turn on this one over here, there we go, just switch it on, putting the power all the way on. I've set up a, another loop system, where the beam will hit that one, go left, go up, go right, go up, go left, go down, go right, go up again. So we sort of see the beam coming out of there, going left, which is very tiny, and then it hits one of the blocks, which is in a loop. And that will again, simply go around again and again and again, charging up, until it's at its full power. Now you might be wondering, how exactly do you fire this? Well, the way you would fire it is by interrupting this loop. So if I was to say, remove this block here, the beam would fire. So we've interrupted the loop and could only go in that direction and that is how it deals damage. But the problem is you've removed the block. So you'd have to keep removing a block, putting a new one back in. So if I was to place this one down and put it back to where it was, there we go. That's a lot of hassle, isn't it? So what I've settled for is a piston system to automate that by having one extra block. So over here I have got the four blocks all set up in their loop and a central block which is sitting on a piston. This piston can be controlled by a button panel because I've just set this up and when pressing it the piston moves forwards and interrupts the beam and will face it directly to where I want it to go. So I've turned this one on, the green beam is now going to start up. If you want to know how I coloured the beam you have to select the colour, make sure these two are on 100%, it will not work if these two are not on 100%. But yeah, you can just choose whatever colour and then just paste in the blocks and they'll have that colour. So here is the green laser, it's fully charged up, and if I was to say press this button, there we go, it interrupts the beam and fires directly forwards. Which is great, isn't it? It's perfectly set up to be used on a large ship to shoot it forwards. But it doesn't aim, does it? It can only shoot in one direction. But if you're on a ship, that doesn't matter. So what I've got over here is a setup that I tested with, which isn't great, but I did find a much better version, but I'll show you this one anyway. So we have our beam generator, which goes into this block here. This one goes left, that one's going up, right, down, and across. We have our piston system in the middle, just to interrupt it, which will send the beam off when I'm ready to fire to this one, which shoots it up, to this one over here. Now these two rotors are on the MART script so you can control it with your mouse. So the issue with this, if I was to reverse the piston, it fires and if I go to first person we can move this around, it's good. But if I was to turn it all the way there, you'll probably notice that the red beam has stopped. Yes, the problem with this setup, with having the two rotors right next to each other, means you're going to hit dead zones. So the way you'd fix this would be to put more combiners around there, but doing that would yes fix the issue, but would limit how far you could turn, which is not good. 
So then I have this one over here, which is a perfect design, which is how I'll show you how to set it up. And the one behind it is a more compact design that's ready to go, basically. So over here, we've got our simple square pattern going all the way around and our piston firing block in the middle. Piston firing block will come again to a block over here, which points up, except this time the block has a rotor underneath it. Yes, the rotor is connecting this aiming one to the grid, which allows it to turn a complete 360 without actually moving the whole thing around and leaving you with a dead zone. If I come up to the top, we have our secondary rotor, which is in the dead center of this block, allow you to move it up and down perfectly. So the beam will always be able to hit this one and you could always shoot it wherever it is. The beam is fully charged up. If I was to enter the, in fact, if I was to turn my mouse, as you can see, I can turn it all the way around a full 360 with the control of my mouse, moving it up and down. There we go, it's brilliant, isn't it? And we can even use the camera on top to control it. Yes, so we can control this fully with our mouse now. And if I was to fire it, out goes block. And there we go. Now it doesn't matter where I turn this or how I turn this, that beam is always going to come out. So there we go. It is upside down because I actually put the camera on upside down. That is what I'm going to show you how to set up because it works perfectly and allows you to aim the two centimeter beam system. So what we're going to need is a grid. So there we are. I've just made a large grid and now I'll need to put down the ion beam generator. Doesn't really matter where I put this as long as the arrow is pointing somewhere where I can connect up one of the combiners. So I've dropped that down. Easy peasy stuff, isn't it? And next, I need a combiner because we need to create our loop. So I am just going to put a block down like that and I'm going to place a combiner. Now on the combiner, we have those white arrows. So I want it to go in that direction. The next blocks, it doesn't matter how far, you can have it pushed straight up against us, should you wish, like that, and just make it go around, but then you're not gonna have anything to trigger the firing system. So it's a good idea just to have some kind of gap between them. So we're gonna put that down, put another combiner, find the arrows. I want to place that forwards. So the beam comes out of there, it shoots into that one, and goes forwards. From here, I need to have another block. So I'm just gonna plop that down there, and I want this one, turn this way and the final one doesn't really matter I'm just gonna plop this down here and boom that is good to go so we've got our basic loop all set up and a nice gap there to allow a piston to pass through so next we're gonna to need to have some power so I'm gonna to need to build some reactors I am in creative mode so I'm just gonna build several reactors here that'll do I'm sure that's enough power there just gotta be careful of that green beam there I forgot to turn it off as you can see it's working we have our loop Next, we need to build the firing mechanism. That's a wave character. I did not mean to press that. So I'm just going to build, let's say, like this. So some blocks there, a piston, which is facing in that direction. And then on top of this, let me just do this because it's going to be a bit fiddly otherwise. So now if I was to reverse the piston, it would go in front of that and fire it straight forwards. There we go. Then we simply reverse it. If you're not happy with the speeds, you can just whack that up. It doesn't really matter. Yep, we reversed it again. The beam is charging up. So that's our basic firing mechanics if we want to stay static weapon. Next, we're going to need to build a rotor. Yes, so coming off this, we need to build it a little bit higher. So like that. We need to make sure there's room enough for it to turn around, but we're going to put a rotor down. For this rotor, it's a very good idea to name this, because we're going to have to put a specific name on this rotor for the script to work. So I'm going to come across to this, find the rotor, and call it Azimuth. This is just how the script recognizes the left and right turning rotor. You can put any name you want after it, as long as it has that first initial key word. But I'm just going to remove that for the time being. So there we go. That is now called Azimuth. And I'm just going to put the... In fact, I'll just leave it like that. That's fine. Next, we can put a, another combiner. Yes, this combiner is now going to point towards the sky. Let me just turn this around and make sure it's the right direction. There we go. Simple. And now we can test this is all working by coming back over to the piston and launching it. 
So that goes forwards, interrupts, hits that one, shoots to the sky. Brilliant. It's now time to build the actual firing cannon part. Now, because these are in line with each other, it's perfectly safe for us to build off this top ring. So this, everything up here is going to be safe for you to build off. And this is how we're going to build the rotor on top. So that ring is safe. Same goes for the underneath. If you want to do some decoration or something underneath there, that's all fine. Now I'm just going to build this up. Doesn't really matter how high we go. In fact, let's make it 50 high. That'll do. And then we need to build our second rotor. Yeah, so the rotor is going to sit directly on top, like so. And then we get the combiner. Find out where the arrow is. We want the arrow to be facing forwards, like that. There we are. The rotor head itself is based into the center of that circle. And we're basically good to go at this point. We just need to come back down to this control panel. Which I think, I, yep, here it is. And we're going to name this other rotor, Elevation. There we go. So that is for the script to know that you want this to be the up and down. So azimuth for left and right, Elevation for up and down. Next, the last little bit we have to actually put on this is of course the programmable block. There's that. And a camera. Yes, we're going to need a camera here because the script requires it for you to be able to aim. I just realised how close that red beam is to me. So we're going to put the camera down. Remember the flat little ring part. That part there, the little rim, has to be on top and the green dot has to be on the bottom left for it to be facing upwards when you view through it. And then last but not least, we need some kind of chair. It could be a seat, cockpit, control station, flight seat, doesn't matter. Just plop it down somewhere and hop inside it. Once we're inside this, we need to find the azimuth. We need to link it to the elevation, the camera, and the control station. So these four blocks are now all together, and we're going to call it Mart. It has to be called Mart for the script to recognize it. And we're going to save it. Next, we come over to the programmable block. We edit it, browse script, find Mart, if I can spell correctly. There we go. And we're going to copy it to the editor, press OK. You get this text over here telling you that if there's an error, something missing, something is wrong, or you'll get something like this, which tells you the turret is active and ready to go, which means we can come over to our control menu, find the camera. For the view, we need to find our piston, which will be our firing mechanic, set that to reverse, view the camera, which we can now view up and down, and we can turn left and right. It's a bit heavy because I put a lot of blocks on there. But you get the idea. And then we can press 3. And look at that. We have ourselves a controllable 2 centimeter beam system. It's very big, so can we compact it down? Now I'm not going to show you how to build this because it's fairly obvious once I actually go around it. But I have this thing over here. So this is my compact 2 centimeter beam turret. Do ignore the grass there, that is just for decoration, so everything under here would be, say, under the ground. So here's the grass, we can then hop up into here and fire it and all that. I even built a nice little inside parts and a bit of decoration, but yes, we have the generator that goes directly into the block with no gap. That block goes a short distance away to this block here. I have some steel blocks there to allow me to make it as compact as possible. This block sitting on the very corner of the generator comes into this block here. This block comes underneath and back around again. This creates our loop, which is what I usually have in front of the generator. But like I said, you could do whatever you want as long as that loop comes back around itself. So there we go. As for the firing mechanism, this is slightly different, although it's basically the same. I'm still using a piston, except this time it's being dropped down with another combiner which has been angled. The angle is for this combiner here. So on top of the generator, I have placed a rotor. Yes, in order to try and make this as compact as possible, I decided to build off the actual generator itself instead of putting it in front of it. So we have our azimuth rotor on top of the generator, which is how we're going to turn it around. And then shortly above it, we have our elevation. 
And of course we've got another block there which is part of the 2 centimeter beam system. It just extends the range with a lower explosion. So I don't talk about that. I just thought it would look a bit more cannon-like with that on. Yes, because I've built off the top of the generator, I needed a way to get this beam to fire up to there. So you couldn't really do too much without going further out, like building another system with a piston that just fires out up and across. But instead I decided just to put a rotor on a piston, angle it, so when this drops down, the beam will then be launched into that one, up to the cannon, and fire. So what I'll do now is very quick demonstration showing how this works. So I've set it all up the same. It's just got the like Mart scripts. I've got Mart turret 2, which is the one over here. And I've got the Mart, which is that one. And the Mart compact, which is what I'm currently in. See how I've set that up. So I'm just going to put this camera here so I can control it left, right, and I can move this up and down. Great, right? I'm going to drop this piston down. Hits the beam and blows everything up, god damn it. Okay, now the game has been reloaded, I can then drop the piston down. There we go, it's rather simple isn't it? So if I just take control of my character and just put that back down again, and just aim the camera. There we go, let's go and shoot, oh the platform's disappeared because I reloaded the game. Let's go and shoot that over there. So it drops down, and we shoot a nice beam, I missed it completely. Let's aim for the particle accelerator over there. Oh, we ran out of power. Oh dear. Well, I found out why my turret stopped firing. I That one shot I did bullseyed this block here, which is how the power is being sent across from the particle accelerator. So that is what I'm being using to power it. If I didn't mention it already, the particle accelerator is overpowered like hell with the sheer amount of power it generates, to the point where I can have an unlimited number of these and the game just would not not care. Yes, I can just come into here again, just view it, and fire off my laser. So hopefully this video has been helpful in how to set up the 2 centimeter beam system as a turret. You can make a fairly, fairly compact turret. This could easily be put onto a large ship. You'll simply bury all this other stuff underneath it. It's even got enough power to generate its own beam. With having 10 large reactors on this thing, which can be easily hidden by the actual beam itself without any risk of it being damaged, it can power itself and fire whenever you want to. Yes, this is the little beam turret. You can do whatever you want. You can do any kind of patterns, just as long as you have that loop. That loop is the key part with all of this. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful, and I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye-bye.